Um, Kanye West on the two uh, event happened. I think was it in Miami? It's for the album. He does this weird performance art. It, I guess I don't really know what the point of it is. I guess it's sort of like a listening party. It kind of flips it on his head because usually when you drop an album or when you when you yeah when you drop an album you usually do it the conventional way is like you make a you, you, you put an album together you pick some singles or maybe you put you put the singles first whatever way you do it you put the album out and then you then tour the album that's what people get to see your kind of vision of the album in real time in kind of in actually in sort of like a 3d sort of world and these days especially the higher echelon artists the travis scott's the post malone's the billy eilish's the doja cats um the lil nas x all these people right the highest of the highest the bad bunnies all these people they use the live shows as a way to kind of really immerse the fans in their world right to really take them on a journey sort of thing and for the most part it's a good long term strategy too because it allows you to have fans for life because if you have if you go to one really good post Malone show you're probably going to stick with him forever even though you probably would be a fan of his forever but if you were to go to his show and just see him standing in front of a dj booth rapping you'd be pissed off but the fact that it's got these crazy visuals and it's great lighting and fireworks and stuff and maybe cameos from guest artists it kind of adds to the whole appeal so in some regard maybe Kanye flipped it on his head by just doing them first so he does the kind of first performance of the album I don't know, I think that the, the, actually the first Donda album, I think he did three in it, right? But in general, he's kind of flipping his head. So he's going to go on tour. He does a first performance. Um, so you can actually get a feel of the whole album itself. You can see the guests. You can see his aesthetic, what he's thinking, the themes behind it, draw whatever things you want to draw from the visual, visuals you see. And you get to hear the album play. So it's cool. And they actually, for the most part, tech production wise, they take a lot of care in the making of the show because the audio is usually Im immaculate like when the first on the drop i'm pretty sure i got the rip of the album off of the the rip that i got of the the, the rip i got of the album was was pulled from the audio of the live stream it's because the audio was that good it cleaned up a little bit you know but when the person put it together big up um and then i uploaded it onto my phone it was pretty decent sounding so they're usually a good way to listen to the album this time around not so much the first half of the album was pretty solid you heard some whatever that was really nice and then for every reason they had some tech issues and the album went to complete shit they were replaying old stuff and it just it just didn't go well in terms of the overall um, event and it made you really wonder like <sighs> for all the delays because it's never on time right the album hasn't dropped um he did an event he put it out there it was happened on the two 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 which was obviously symbolic and nice and whatnot cool but in terms of actually putting out an album that we can all listen to and have on our phones it's still not out yet of course we can't have it on our phones because this he's got this new thing that he's pushing a stem player where he's essentially having his own little walkman -y type mp3 player thing that you had to buy for 200 dollars to have the album which is crazy but it's his way to kind of get ownership and to take the power back from the record labels and blah whatever it's just another money making scheme i get it cool but i love the music so you know whatever i'll get it how i'll get it anyway i'm not gonna fucking buy a stem player but still even if you have got a stem player from what i've read so far there's only so far four tunes have come out only four tracks and allegedly what they're saying is that as the tracks are getting finished and mastered that's when they can be released but again we were never given this information prior and it's funny too because we never get apologies you never get an apology from him in terms of it's late you never get an explanation as to why it's late and you never get an idea as to when it is likely to drop it just drops when it drops but then you're expected to queue that's the thing as well it's always a one-way relationship with people isn't it? it's always one way it's always consume and take in what, I, what i'm giving to you but don't ask any questions like shut up just enjoy what i'm giving to you or don't but don't ask questions because they expect you to queue up because imagine if the stadium was empty he'd be going on rent of course it's never gonna be empty because you know it's kanye west and he's a flipping beast but if it was empty he wouldn't be happy so you queue up i think i saw pictures of people you know queuing to get flipping um yeezys because they had a merch that they had on sale they had slides that were on sale like really cool stuff right um that people were obviously wanted to buy cool 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 it got too hectic and they had to shut it down so all that was obviously nice for the for the bank balance but then everything else the actual music that people want to hear wasn't because i'd imagine that uh, It'd be hard, yeah would it be fair to say the majority of people that go to these things actually want to hear the music i would say so right 
let's say it's in the high 80s, maybe the low 90s, the people that really just want the music. Yes, there's mostly, there's going to be a lot of hype beasts there, people and streetwear people, who, people just want to flip shoes and whatnot, or merch. But for the most part, you're really there for the music. So when the music doesn't drop, it's like, what's the point? I guess you get a good live show, but is it, even, is it really a good live show? No, I don't think so. Especially these ones. His performances are good. That Larry Hoover one he did was fucking phenomenal. And usually they're always pretty decent because Kanye is one of the only rappers, especially the big ones. No, the only rappers in general who kind of performs without a backing track. So he actually raps, you know, with the assistance of kind of a couple of ad libs here and there, maybe a verse and hopefully verse on a, on a chorus. But he actually raps his raps. He doesn't just stand there and scream into the microphone or whatnot. So that's commendable. But this wasn't really a live show it was just an mp3 playing or a laptop playing the tunes a laptop that i guess wasn't the right one because some of the tunes got fucked up or whatnot and then you know people just bobbing their heads in the stadium i guess maybe if you're in the stadium hearing it on good speakers or something but imagine leaving your house paying the ticket to go to that event parking food accommodation whatever just to hear it played through a speaker and all rapping and then when they did rap it it always sounded out sick horrible the only best thing about it was this seen jack harlow on stage i've always been a big fan of jack harlow and unfashionably so i've always thought he's an artist that has a lot of range or rapper that has a lot of versatility i like his tone i like the things that he talks about i like the fact that he's not trying to be something that he's not he's clearly just a, a you know what what he says on the tin like a white rapper that was from a certain part of america talking about his basically college experience and growing up and whatnot i love all that sort of shit and i legitimately think he's pretty versatile i really do think there's a lot of scope and range to him so when i saw that tweet that Kanye put out where he was kind of bigging him up i thought it was a sarcastically kind of you know taking the piss but it clearly wasn't because soon after we saw pictures of them hanging out and then soon after we saw him performing so i'm not sure if it was all done beforehand <coughs> and that was part of the rollout or if it happened in that short space of time in a couple of days where jack harlow went from just being a guy who put out a video that everyone liked to suddenly being doing a song with Kanye that's going to be his new album but I thought the song that they played was sick and Jack Collins verse was really strong too I was a big fan of that and that was really all about it it was funny to see Marilyn Manson and flipping the baby on the stage together there was absolutely zero interaction between the both of them Marilyn Manson looked a lot less bloated than he has done in other times I've seen him on stage there um, so that was quite cool but they didn't really interact with each other whatsoever. That was interesting to see. Um, uh, and then, of course, the other interesting part to see was Playboy Carter's evolution in terms of his aesthetic and how he basically presents himself. And I'm I'm all for it. Again, maybe because I've been dressing like this for many years anyway, and I grew up basically... Um, I grew up basically being one of the only kind of black kids in my area that would listen to head metal music, listen to punk music, go to metal festivals and whatnot, which kind of did hamper my ability to try and pull girls from my area because they really weren't into the aesthetic of me wearing my flipping baggy combat pants and, you know, DC shoes and whatnot and wristbands with studs on it. It was, wasn't something that girls really liked back then because, you know, they wanted a particular kind of looking guy and I really didn't fit that mold, especially being a black kid. So I definitely vibe with this. And I think as an artist, <clears throat> in terms of how he's changing his sound, it all makes sense. Playboy cut his sound and everything from his kind of self-titled to the dial lit to whole lot of red. They're all kind of aesthetic changes too, but they're all kind of artistic changes. So when you do that, I would imagine part of the artistic change would be to kind of get your mind into kind of believing you're that person by changing everything about you whether it's the movies you watch the songs you listen to i'd imagine he's probably listened to a lot of stuff outside of hip-hop to kind of get him into that mode you know visuals videos clothes you're buying and you know, especially with brands like because i'm pretty sure he's wearing because he could play with Carter, he came out to obviously perform the off the grid with fabio foreign i'm pretty sure in this video this clip here where in the part of the video he's wearing head to toe Vetemar or something along those kind of lines I'm pretty sure because most of this sort of aesthetic came from that I'm pretty sure it was maybe for spring 2021 collection <coughs> or one of them does a lot of that kind of raver um, crump sort of style type of dressing <coughs> sorry allergies coming at me again but that's basically something that I would have 
definitely expect him to wear but it was funny to see people on the live stream freaking out when they saw him but i don't think it's that much of a deviation from the goth vampire girl gay vampire thing that he was going for with the whole rick and the alix kind of head-to-toe look this is just maybe an evolution the next kind of common stage f- phase of it and again he's an artist musical artist i want him to be a bit weird i want him to kind of go up on a deep end i want him to maybe embrace different looks to kind of try different things why not like let's be a bit more experimental and i think there was a really good quote i saw via this instagram page that i follow which is who is celebrity vice let me see if i can get up on here bear with me they had a really good caption that they wrote regarding um payboy carty's kind of transformation at the show which i was really all for oh not now get off notifications why do always do that to me let's see here who is it there we go yeah so this page had a really good um kind of interpretation of his outfit change it was here let me see if i can get it there you go got it on there yeah so Curse who who, um, who who is celebrity vice and it's a quote taken from michael jackson supposedly it says as follows uh michael jackson said these following words and this is a image that shows Playboy Carter in the right at the Donda 2 live stream. And then Playboy Carter, I guess, in maybe the self-titled era where he used to wear a lot of Supreme. I think there's a Rick Owen pants still, Dr. Martin boots. So it's somewhat similar to what he's going for at the moment. But aesthetically looking wise, he was more streetwear, conventional sort of hip hop looking here. And then, of course, he's progressing to looking like this at the moment which again i wasn't really i don't think the outfit was really that good personally i think his friend looked better the kid with the spiky hair looked amazing i don't think the, the outfit was that great i probably wouldn't have worn that um lace top thing i probably maybe worn a really tight sing singlet or t-shirt or whatnot i thought how the boots were dropped or every shit personally for me personally i don't think it was that good but let's continue and people calling him jeff hardy but yeah the quotes from mac jackson as follows it says mac jackson said as follows yeah, I want a whole new character, a whole new look. I should be a totally different person. People should never think of me as the kid who sang ABC. I want you back. I should be the new incredible actor, singer, dancer that will shock the world. He says, I will do no interview. I will be in magic. I'll be perfectionist, a researcher, a trainer, a master. I'll be better than ever every great rap- actor ro- uh, roped in on one. Um, roped in one sorry i must have the most incredible training um system to dig and dig and until i find i will study and look back at the whole world as i mentioned before of entertainment and perfect it take it steps further than where the greatest left off michael jackson on the day he decided to evolve all caps play because kind of the console would pay for the experience so yeah and then you know there's i think carty shared a text of him texting carney saying that they should go on tour together which i would be there for 100 percent a tour with playboy carty and kanye would be fucking amazing maybe kanye could convince playboy carty to actually rap on the stage instead of just screaming um which is definitely a thing that he does and enjoys but i would pay good money to go to a show hear playboy carty perform his tracks without the backing track because i think it would add a completely other dimension to it i, I don't know why i guess you know why would you want to change it if you don't need to but that would be sick to see let's see play this oh, sorry, this off is too loud apologies for that uh, what else is said here iconic yep i definitely agree with that one but yeah man big up big up the show but yeah the show was a bit of a dud in that regard it didn't necessarily work too great the sound was a bit off towards the end um kind of threw his mic into the ground but maybe the whole point of these sort of things is this this is courtesy of a a, a photographer called just sobel and he took some really beautiful pictures of Kanye at the donda 2 performance like Maybe this is part of the reason why these things exist. There are they're basically a content generating, a content generation concert, right? It's not really a thing for you to actually listen to a finished project because it's not finished, but that's what it basically is. It's a it's a place where you can go and actually, you know, get your Instagram off, show that you're part of culture, you're taking part in a monumental event, bloody blah, blah blah blah. But in terms of actually listening to good music or being able to, I don't know, see a good performance, that's not what you see it's all just content like you know because everything here looks very instagrammable right it fits really well on the square it fits really well on the you know come a couple of images attached onto twitter and shit which again i've been using far more than instagram how about you guys same i've been on twitter like way more these days than i was on instagram and i was here and i'm sharing way more pictures on there than i ever did on instagram too 
it's just a shame because for the most part when i'm on instagram i share stuff on my stories and that's about it i'm hardly ever on there but yeah yeah i guess the content was cool but i would have preferred to heard the album but you know i guess we'll have to wait and get it when we get it we'll get an observation from him because it looks like kanye is busy judging from this post looks like he's busy hanging out with um his uh his new piece now that isn't um what you call it what's her name what's that girl's name jody whatever see i even forget her name julia fox he's got a new boo already at the moment someone called uh cheney jones who everyone's calling a uh kim kardashian look like um but yeah i guess it's funny though isn't it because she's probably i guess she's probably somewhat mixed race or something right or somewhat latina but then you get called a kanye look like even though no it can look like even though your kind of attributes are something that those women usually pay for you know in terms of the shape and the bums and the tits and the whatnot it must be a weird place to live in it the lips it must be a weird place but yeah what do i know what do i know